of all scales, from emerging startups to established corporate entities, with innovation as its hallmark. Center is shining light on cutting-edge climate technologies developed by India's vibrant startup ecosystem, fostering the adoption of sustainable consumption patterns and circular economy principles. Through bespoke training programs and expert workshops being conducted in partnership with its knowledge partner eCube Investment Advisors, the center is fortifying Indian businesses equipping them with tools and knowledge to navigate the intricate landscape of sustainability with confidence. Through its outreach programs, it is showcasing global best practices, emerging policies and transformative climate technologies, aiding companies in meeting their enhanced reporting obligations on environmental, social and governance indicators. Over the next five years, the center aims to create impactful change in driving sustainable practices within Indian industries. From green literacy and entrepreneurship to biodiversity conservation and sustainable solutions, it will produce thought leadership pieces on specific industry challenges for building competitiveness on sustainability and also offer targeted interventions for technology support as well as enabling access to finance. FIKI's Center for Sustainability Leadership has embarked on a transformative journey with the realization that sustainable business practices are the cornerstone of progress. We invite you to join this collaborative initiative in pursuit of sustainability. Together, let's shape a brighter, greener future for generations to come. So without further ado, I'll I'll uh, I'll take your permission and start the session. Um, we are we are having a little problem connecting with the uh with our third panelist. Uh, he would be joining in in a short while. Uh, I welcome you all to the third climate startup showcase being organized under the ages of Picky Center for Sustainability Leadership. The center has been set up for advancing the sustainability journey of Indian industry with special focus on SMEs. Hindustan Unilever is a founding member of the center. Today's session focuses on the theme of circularity, and the session has been curated by the center's knowledge partner, eCube Investment Advisors. We have with us uh, a panel of experts who would share their insights and feedback on the presentations by startups. We are delighted to have with Bobby Polly. Managing Partner at One Planet Partners Fund EQ. Welcome, Mr. Polly. Uh, he is a seasoned investment professional with over 23 years of experience and specializes in private equity and strategy consulting. He has played a pivotal role in founding the private equity business at Tata Group, managing the $600 million Tata Opportunities Fund. With a track record of successful exits and championing new investments, Mr. Polly brings extensive expertise in value creation across port portfolio assets. We welcome you to the session. Our next panelist is Mr. Prashant Venkatesh, Marketing Director and India Sustainability Head at Hindustan Unilever. He leads numerous initiatives on health and well-being and circular economy at Hindustan Unilever. His strategic vision and leadership drive HUL's sustainability efforts forward, making a tangible impact on the society and environment. He also spearheads HUL's partnerships with the FIKI Center for Sustainability Leadership. Our third panelist, Mr. Devraj Banerjee. Welcome, Mr. Banerjee, to the session. Uh, he's Senior Fund Manager, Sydney Venture Capital uh, he leads numerous initiatives on health and uh, he, he leads, he, he is uh, an investment and strategy professional with 16 years of experience. He is known as a business builder and operations focused investor. Uh, Sidby Venture Capital Limited endeavors to nurture the entrepreneurial ecosystem by fueling innovation and fostering the growth of startups and high potential essence. We welcome you to the Startup Showcase or under the Picky Center. 
We are grateful to all of you for joining us, for taking time out and joining us for today. We do we do hope that you would find the discussions, uh, you know, and the presentations useful. Some housekeeping rules. Uh, we have uh, allocated 10 minutes for each of the startups for their presentation, which will be followed by 10 minutes of, uh, 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 you know, comments and suggestions by the expert panel. Uh, time permitting, we may also take up questions from the audience. Uh, I would request them to put in their observations and queries either in the chat box or the Q&A. Uh, without further ado, I would now like to invite our first startup for the day, uh, Mr. Saurabh Mehta. Hi. Hi, welcome to the session. Uh, Mr. Saurabh Mehta is from, no is from Note. I would like him to introduce himself and then followed by his presentation. Over to you, Mr. Mehta. Hi, my name is Saurabh. Uh, my startup is called Note, which is abbreviation for No Offense to Earth. So uh, background is I've been into environmental sustainability for last 15 years, worked a lot in the off-grid energy sector. Then uh, 2017, I joined the family business, which was about uh, stationary. So we were making plastic uh, ball pins, disposable ball pins. And uh, thin, things didn't really work out because uh, couldn't find environmental sustainability and plastic disposable pens uh, coming together. So I started my own venture uh, out of the family business, called it BioQ Eco Solutions. Uh, this was three years ago when we got registered and we started working in the B2B corporate gifting space. So in the first three years, we uh, did a revenue of around 15 CR selling to 70 plus corporate clients and have a network of more than 200 uh, corporate gifting companies who buy from us to further sell it to uh, uh, companies across the globe. So, uh, so far we have sold uh, in more than 10 countries. After India, it's mostly UAE, uh, Indonesia and Singapore that we have been selling the most. And we sell a lot of these plantable stationery which have seeds uh, in them. So that's why a uh, lot of countries don't easily allow for seeds to enter from other countries into this. So that's why there's limitation in many other countries. Uh, but like now we realize there is much more that could be done in this industry uh, in what we learned in three years. And uh, then we started our flagship project calling it Note. Uh, for this project, we raised a small grant from uh, Startup India for 16 lakh and to develop world's first and only zero plastic pen. Uh, we recently got a lot of media coverage uh, in renowned uh, uh, media houses, uh, including today's Patriot uh, in Delhi. So that also covered our story. And uh, so what we're trying to solve here is the 50 billion plastic ball pin problem, which end up in landfill every year. The problem is not just about the number, it's also about what a ball pin is. If we Look at a ball pen, we realize that the functioning part, what you write with, is just the ink and the tip, which is merely 5% of the entire product. All the rest material, which is mostly plastic and metal, is just to keep these functioning things together. And that's 95%. And because the product is so small and these there are so many different parts, the recycling of these uh, small material is impossible. You can't break them down uh, and then recycle them separately. And all of it, all of this 95% is non-biodegradable. Now, the problem is, is sizable. It's, uh, it's actually comparable to that of the plastic straw problem, which has gained a lot of uh, importance. It's, it has been in discussions and alternates of that are being explored. Whereas, uh, uh, despite of the size uh, in this industry, it's not really spoken about because it doesn't really qualify as single use. Whereas the usage, actual usage of a writing instrument, the time you spend writing is less than 40 minutes. That's the average. But recently the problem is being realized. It's now part of uh, EPR, like the brands who are making ball pins are responsible to manage their waste, which uh, it's, it's under India's... Uh, Waste Management Act now as well. And, uh, uh, but the problem has been, there has never never been a proper solution to this plastic pen problem. Uh, it so far has been considered to be impossible that a pen could be made without using any plastic. So uh, we got our first patent for uh, one of the designs uh, for making a zero plastic pen. It has only paper or bamboo 
that is what we're using. And so looks just like any other ball pin, but instead of plastic, there is only paper. If you break any other pin, even though it's claiming to be eco-friendly, but there is always plastic hidden inside, which which will the, the refill part at least will be plastic. But in our case, like we have removed that. So uh, we've been awarded the patent uh, last month and two more patents uh, have been published uh, on the same. And uh, uh, what we're also trying to work on is making refills. So not just pens, but also refills so that we are able to adapt to or also provide for other pens which have a, uh, a sustainable body. And uh, if with our pens, like the overall product becomes much more sustainable. So uh, that's the solution part. And uh, what we, we 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 very recently launched uh, the new uh, the new uh, the new product, and uh, we see that the overall writing instrument industry has been growing uh, for uh, like at almost a CAGR of uh, six to seven percent for the last 10, 15 years. So in spite, and this is in spite of like growing digitization. So people are using less uh, pens to write, like the writing uh, time spent is actually less, but because they are so cheap, people are buying these in bulk. So the overall requirement for writing instruments is only going upwards. So uh, for now we are selling, we started selling online. We are also targeting uh, corporate gifting with these products. And uh, in some time we'll get into institutional sales, but we, uh, we know that this is not going to have a long-term significant impact until and unless we are actually reaching the masses, uh, because that's where maximum uh, pens are being consumed at really affordable cost. And uh, so, uh, and to be able to do that, we realize that there are uh, challenges that need to be addressed and ways in which we are actually trying to overcome those challenges. So the first is realizing the problem. Sorry, just a sec. So, uh, so overall, uh, so students uh, in schools, especially, are the major user for stationery, and they themselves, no matter how much environment education uh, is is getting popularity, but they don't realize the very instrument that they that they are using to study is part of the problem. So, um, be it be it pencils, be it pen or other writing, uh, other art uh, art material, they're all adding to the pollution problem or deforestation also in some cases. So uh, for that, like the communication, the realization that these users uh, need to have, that stationery is also a part of, a significant part of the pollution problem. And some action needs to be done, which uh, will require action from both the consumer side and the producer side. Second, we realize that ball pin alone might not be enough to capture the capture a good chunk of the market. So the what we have done in the last three, four years of experimenting to get to the zero plastic ball pin is also realized how do you redesign uh, other writing instruments. So be it a gel pen, be it markers, highlighters, sketch pens, pencils, so that they have minimal impact on the planet. So how do you make like the most sustainable version of all the writing instruments? And so that's why we need to continue innovating. We need to continue making prototypes and testing them so that like uh, soon we are also in a position to go beyond ball pins and launch other writing instruments. And uh, then uh, we realized our, our core strength has been in uh, designing these products in the technology of how to make these without plastic. And thus uh, to be able to really scale the production and parallelly also make these available to everyone, they have to be uh, like we we will eventually have to sell them in the nearest stationery store. So one is like to bring down the cost to plastic uh, plastic pen level, which is theoretically possible. Currently, we know because our raw material is actually much cheaper than plastic. It's almost one third. Uh, it's all about how do you cut down on the processing cost. So uh, just just to uh, give comparison, a typical plastic pen will involve seven steps to get the final product. In our case, the steps are 15. So we have to bring down the number of steps and also automate them. So scaling production and uh, 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 like creating that distribution channel so that like these uh, products are available in the nearest shop, that is what will make it really impactful. That is what will bring the numbers and the plastic uh, problem will actually get solved with this. So for this, we uh, realized that we will have to collaborate with existing players in the market so far, we have got interest from all the major players uh, in the in the stationery industry in the last three months. 
we've been uh, in discussion with them that how do we take their help or they take our help like to get these things uh, into the market. So, uh, so yeah, so we do realize like this, this has to be done to create a wider impact. And uh, last is like when our execution plans, like, so this has been our current plan. And like now we are exploring like uh, in international markets, especially in EU and uh, Gulf and North America, the percentage adoption for sustainable products is much higher uh, compared to India. So uh, we've been we've been exploring uh, that for the last few years. Uh, we've been experimenting with that as well, and we see huge potential of uh, these kind of products to uh, get good uh, acceptance there. And uh, product development, as I said, like has to continue. There are already uh, ideas around uh, uh, other stationary items that could be done with minimal uh, impact on the environment and uh, the automation part. So these three will be our key focus uh, and uh, collaborations, of course. So yeah, I, I try to keep it really short. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mehta. I, I would like to invite the panel to share their uh, views. Maybe I can just go first. Uh, Saurabh, uh, I, I, I think a, a very good job done in you know presenting the entire business. I have one question and a few comments, and you know, then I'll leave it to the other panelists if they'd yeah. like to mention something. One, and my question is uh, from a manufacturer. So, for the scale of the problem that you're trying to solve, you're trying to take away low cost, so to speak. I'm saying there are high end ballpoint pens. That's not your customers. You know, you're not looking at uh, uh, the high end pens. You're really looking at the plastic pens, which are relatively low price, which a large portion of it is in the informal market. Um, uh, let's say unorganized market, so the prices of those ballpoint pens are going to remain low. Do you think that ever that by your manufacturing process can come to a point of automation or manufacturing stages where you can be really comparable and make the same type kind of profits? Because if you want to make this available in retail stores, the retailer also has to make the margins, right? I mean, in terms of so. Yeah. Compared to the problem that you are trying to solve, because it's a low cost item, uh, I'm just trying to stress test, and maybe you need to think that through also the viability of A, the cost of manufacturing this pen at scale, such that your cost is comparable where a shop regular shopkeeper would be able to make the same degree of margin, because even if you're Pens. If the shopkeeper doesn't make margins, he's not going to push this pen. He's going to probably, he or she is not going to keep that. So yeah. uh, I'm just trying to stress this. And the second thing is from even from a sustainability standpoint, uh, from I don't know what manufacturing process is, but does the process of manufacturing this uh, pen also entail uh, a, a carbon footprint that you know is comparable to the footprint uh, from a from a plastic perspective so then uh, you know it kind of negates the advantage if you will uh, yeah. uh, that's the risk you run uh, i'll also continue with my two or three observations so that i get it out of the way this question you can respond the one i think an observation i'd have is that your best bet i think you're already doing it is partnering with i would think the the leading manufacturers or the distributors of brands because you have the technology you do run the risk of them you know, taking over some of your technology, running with their products, but I think that's a risk you, 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 you might as well take, uh, because there are lots of global players also who don't have this kind of technology or focus, or the raw materials are not just available to them, so they might want to partner you in terms of establishing that. Secondly, I think in terms of making this uh, two uh, points: one, uh, the the entire um, hotels meetings, um, you know, mice market is probably a useful place for you to drive distribution or drive user experience because I think there are, there is a, I would think as opposed to schools and other, these, these are also conferences and the like where exhibitions where there will be a fair number of, you know, writing materials being distributed, but trying to make those available to products, people using them could be a, a usual, a, a good way to drive up volumes uh, in, and the last but not the least, the other advantage that you might have, which I think maybe some of the others is, is the aesthetics of the pen. Are you able to make this uh, more appealing in many ways and personalized in some ways? So, which can actually give you a better price and therefore 
branding and all of that lends to several of those uh, you know benefits especially for the international market of course that might be a good way of uh, progressing i'll halt there i know i've taken more than my fair share of time uh, thank you for the observations so um to uh, like uh, just just commenting on the observations first so we are looking at the gifting market which includes events and hotels like all the complimentary or promotional gifting because and that already that's a strength that we have established over the last three years of uh, promoting sustainable stationery so this will obviously uh, be an easy step for us but we also realize that the actual impact will come only when we are able to sell to students who use these the maximum and for that, uh, as you rightly said, like we have to compete on the cost. So we have figured the way how to reach that cost. So it's just a matter of time now. So uh, we've been so like the last three years was a lot of experimentation of like getting the right prototype, testing it to get the eighteen year, eighteen months of shelf life. So all those challenges mm -hmm. have now been overcome. Now the next step is like how do you reduce the number of steps? So we know for sure. Uh, that we will be able to meet the production cost of that offer, like the cheapest plastic ball pen. So it is it is possible. It's just that the automation, like I mean, uh, it took them eighty years to get this get, get to this level. So we at least need like three four three five years. So so uh, so yeah. So so that's that's there. And uh, uh, we were actually considering the high end market, uh, like having great aesthetics, like getting into the hundred to five hundred rupee segment. But then again, like the problem still remains. So the problem that we are here to solve is eliminating plastic from pens like altogether. And uh, uh, all this sounds too optimistic and unrealistic, but like, I mean, I think the effort has to be made there uh, because if we remain a boutique uh, kind of a company who's only catering to a certain segment, there is no real impact that's happening. If I were to do that, like I would continue doing my uh, sustainable gifting that, that, that fetches uh, Good money, but like here's here is where I want to really take a chance and spend all the energy in like eliminating eliminating plastic from stationery like all. And then I I think I'm pretty confident that it it is possible. Oh yeah, other part was the energy. So so yeah, um, in our case, the uh, energy consumption, the overall uh, emissions are extremely low because there is no burning involved. It's only process like paper being uh, be, being rolled or uh, bamboo being drilled. Like such simpler processes, there is no burning involved. So our energy consumption or emissions are extremely low. So that's that's one huge advantage that we have. So uh, like paper is in a form that like it, it's flat, it could be rolled. That's all. Uh, mm -hmm. In case of if I want to drill, like we already have a solid. In case of plastic, you have to melt it, mold it. We already have a solid. All you have to do is a drill. So the energy consumption is is much lower uh, in our case. Yeah. I would like to invite uh, Mr. Devraj Banerjee and Prashant for their uh, comments. Just uh, from my side, I think uh, great to hear the story behind you know how you started this um, this venture. So I just have. Two comments and you know one one is a question one is a comment. What's been the customer feedback? As in you know people who have used the pens versus a you know a regular ballpoint pen or a regular pen. What's been the feedback from them in terms of usage, in terms of longevity? Number one, and second is uh, so I, I I understood from you that you have already identified how to bring down the cost and now it's more about putting up the manufacturing to get there. Is that am I right? Okay. 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 Because one of the thoughts which I was, you know, when I was looking at your website as well is, you know, getting more design inputs from students because, uh, you know, everything I feel is boiling down to design in sustainability as well. I think you've already cracked it. Uh, but if there is any more uh, design inputs needed, the best way to do it is just put out a challenge in the market uh, to students from National Institute of Design or yeah. IITs. Uh, because you already seem to be uh, on that journey. But yeah, but uh, really good to see this work. Uh, so I am still unclear like what, about, about the question. So no, the first one, just a question, like what's been the product feedback? Because, yeah. you know, the problem with sustainability is there are many, many good sustainable products out there which then end up not working on 
performance, okay. right? So has that perform performance feedback on the pen been good? Yeah. So functionality uh, is the same. So what we have done is we haven't played with the ink and the tip. So that that's pretty much the same. The the ball is the same. The ink is the same. We're just taking the best what's there in the industry. What we have worked is the body around it. So uh, in terms of writing, we don't have a problem. In fact, we are slightly better because we have replaced the plastic in the refill with more ink. So it it uh, it's it basically slightly improves the writing experience and longer uh, writing is length as well. So uh, and now then like it's it's all about like how do you uh, everyone has a different way of holding a pen uh, using a pen. So for that overall my industry our industry of sustainable stationery faces a challenge because we don't have that many variants. Whereas in conventional pens you have that many so many variants that somebody finds their fit. So uh, uh, I mean what you find uh, as a good pen maybe I won't like it the same grip. So that's why uh, that will only happen with time, like this, uh, developing certain kind of grip from where you hold, the kind of thickness you want. Somebody wants thin, somebody wants really thick. So those things will happen. I think we don't have any challenge. Uh, we have we are slightly better, I would say, but at least at par. And in terms of the uh, shelf life, uh, the 18 months thing that we have achieved. So, yeah. Sure. There's nothing lacking in functionality. Yeah. So thank you, Saurabh. Uh, thank you for the presentation and uh, the uh, the you know answers for the questions. Uh, we'd like to move on to the next uh, presentation. I would like to inv invite Mr. Bijoy Halder from Banofi Leathers to please thank introduce you, himself and share his presentation. And uh, your time is uh, fifteen thirty one as per my clock, so would request you to adhere to the time limit. Yeah, I'll just share the screen. Yeah. Hi guys, so I'm from Banofi Leather. We are a material science company manufacturing plant-based leather using banana stems. So if you have like seen a banana plant, the entire plant is used, like it fruits only once, only the stems are a waste. So we use that as a raw material to manufacture leather. This is our team. So Jinali is the founder. She was a full-time student in Yale last year, and that's why he started. And uh, she came down all the way to India. Right now, we are based out of Calcutta, manufacturing leather using banana stems. So there have been a lot of, uh, you know, uh, in terms of value, if I say, we are associated with 400 plus small landholder farmers in and around Kolkata to source our raw materials. Because big farmers anyway make money, right? So it's about the small farmers. That's one. Secondly, uh, we are a women-led company. So 60% of the workforce are women. And coincidentally, these women come from the farmer's family. So that's again a boost for their livelihood. So the problem we are addressing, there are two major problems. One is uh, managing the agricultural waste. In terms of banana, India being the largest producer of bananas, there's like 20 kgs of waste per kg of fruit. Right now, our consumption is 40,000 kgs of banana stems monthly. Initially, it is go for waste. And when a banana stem is dumped, there's a lot of methane release in the atmosphere. That's again harmful. We source these raw materials, process it, and our product contains 60% of banana stems. If I got another is the leather industry. So if in processing animal leather, there's a lot of chemicals, toxic chemicals which are cancerous in nature are involved. That's again a problem for the environment. These are the two major problems we are solving. There's a lot of water wastage in processing animal leather. So Banofi comes in and it's a complete new category. Say it's been like a decade this industry has cropped up or else before that it was just two industries, animal leather and there's again PU. So this is a complete new category, plant-based leather, where uh, you know the material is made up of normally maximum content is biomass. So in that case, in processing this, 95% less water is used, 90% less carbon emissions are there. And there's no, literally no water wastage because we don't use any water to process our material as banana plant itself has a lot of water inside it. These are some of the stats where 
120 million tons of waste is generated by banana farms in India. And we are addressing that as our raw materials. This is a complete process how we make. So it's mostly our material. If I talk about it, 60% banana stems, 20% other natural additives, and another 20% is non-bio waste, which is again to give it a, you know, like as you mentioned last, that uh, in the in sustainability sector, people really don't uh, take note of the durability or say longevity of the product. That's where uh, we actually want to give a material that's usable and that has a complete, com as can come in as a competitor to other materials that is already there in the industry. Yeah, we, we are in the market for like three years now, where two and a half years was full of R&D and six months back we became commercially viable. And right now the material we have is best suited for fashion applications. So we are concentrating there, but again, being a material science company, R&D is still there to develop materials, alternate materials for other industries like automobile, shoes and other things. We have uh, we have got a few certifications since our major market is the US and Europe. We are Reach and Calprof certified, which makes it easier to export. This is what our material looks like. It feels, performs, as well as you know, smells like animal leather. So making it a perfect a perfect alternative for animal leather. This is the industry we are currently targeting. As I mentioned, like our material right now is best suited for fashion applications. We are getting into the fashion market in India. Currently, uh, designer houses like Savya Sachin, Namita Domri are sampling with our material. Uh, brands from the US, uh, European brands in Italy. Uh, there's a brand named Mio Modo. They're already been working with us. Uh, we also recently signed an NDA with the Caring Group to develop a material exclusively for them. We are also, in, as we are doing an R&D in the automobile space, uh, we are in touch with Tata Motors to develop something for them as well. This is a complete study of Banofi leather compared to other uh, materials in the market. Where we stand, uh, like we have both the qualities and sustainability with the price factor, making it scalable. These are some of the products that we showcased in Paris. These are some of the advisors uh, who actually helped us during our initial days in R&D and how we go about the marketing uh, our material. This as like, is a complete new segment altogether. These are the brands that we are currently, you know, in discussion with. Few brands are sampling. We have also received orders. So we are, we are in multiple spaces. We are in the corporate gifting space. So uh, we have clients who does corporate gifting. There's also in the hospitality sector, uh, there's like one of our client is doing all the hospitality goods, like say posters, table mats, things like that, where, where they can actually implement it, you know, be more sustainable. Taj group of hotels is one of them. This is the current revenue we have done like uh, in the six months, but we have a lot of commitments out there. We have won uh, the very circular design challenge and uh, we are also awarded by the Ministry of Agriculture. This was our uh, like biggest breakthrough. Uh, six months back, we won the Hull Prize. That's like the world's largest social entrepreneurship competition. Among 10,000 teams, we were the winner. This is also there. So we also exhibited our material in collaboration with a brand at the Lakme Fashion Week that was held in the United Nations headquarters in New Delhi. These are some of the media coverages that we have been through. So NBC actually flew down to Calcutta to shoot us. And uh, that was like a major media coverage that we got. We are also featured by WOW. Yeah, that's all. I'd love to answer your questions. We can go first again. Yeah, and 
Yeah, sure. Sure, Mr. Pauli. I had also got in mind that I'd missed Mr. Devraj Banerjee's comments in the previous presentation. So uh, after Hello, you, will be, I request Mr. Banerjee to come up, take over. Yeah. Great slides, yeah. Uh, very attractive, uh, very well made. Uh, you're hitting all the right uh, pointers. Uh, so great work done once again. Just a few questions from my side. The likes of Atma, Rashi, these guys are also trying to work on similar kind of technologies, right? Where they are transforming or, or rather working on plant-based leather, right? Mostly banana. So what is your core USP here? Is is the technology your USP? Uh, is it the design your USP? What exactly is the USP of this company? And I would say, uh, so we the, we are the first company to, you know, like uh, have a material that looks, feels and smells like animal leather. So there have been a lot of companies who have been developing plant-based leather, but it didn't really mimic animal leather where it could replace that. That's one. We are again a patent pending company. We have filed the patents for the technology that we have. That's second. And thirdly, uh, we, have, we have got a worldwide recognition where uh, you know, a lot of brands who are leading in this industry have shown interest and are working with our material. Understood. And and are you able to kind of calculate the kind of carbon footprint that you are reducing, which you mentioned? Of course, you did that. But is it, a, you know, what sort of method are you using while doing that? Compared to animal leather, we are reducing it by 95%. I can give you the exact number. But yeah, compare, when compared to animal leather industry, we are reducing it by 95%. Okay. The use cases are a lot, but uh, anything which has been very, uh, you know, very quick turnaround, uh, very early adopters, mostly would be uh, uh, shoes, right? Uh, because uh, plant-based shoes or sneakers are pretty much in vogue right now. So is that something which is also happening with you guys? So as, as this entire industry is new and the possibilities are numerous, so currently, if you say like, it's like, it's in everything, even in automobile shoes and fashion applications, it's like at par, there's not like shoes, uh, limited to shoes, but yeah, that's also a big job. Great, great. And I like the marketing pitch of you guys. I, I, I could see what you've covered on the web. Of course, your website is not running as of now. I think you'll have, yeah. yeah so we have games. actually rebranded, that's why. Yeah. Uh, good, good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Bobby Polly, would you like to go next? Yeah. And then yeah, sure. Vijay, quick question. Uh, uh, you, I saw the chart where you said the while the cost per meter of the uh, of your product is about thirty dollars for false leather, it's about twenty dollars. Uh, I'm just curious, what is your cost of production um uh, i i don't know if i if i missed it but i was thinking it was more in the region of about ten dollars or thereabouts so there's enough profits to be made even at a twenty dollar price where i'm coming from is yeah because the focus of having a high-end fashion uh you know it's a lifestyle it's it, people want to be seen in that product i mean a hermes bag or i think uh, gucci made it and one of your clients made it fashionable to have a canvas bag at twenty thousand dollar price point so compared to you know uh, very precious leather, you probably have a canvas bag, which uh, just because it has the branding and people want to be seen in it. So the point is, if, if you have to drive that kind of a movement, then uh, it is expensive, but can be done. You need kind of celebrity brand ambassadors. You want to make it, it fashionable to be seen and, you know, and having your bag products. And that's a big investment that you have to make up front, right? In terms of being that fashionable uh, intelligent, conscientious user uh, uh, who's willing to pay a premium and then $30 is, is very little compared to the price of a $2,000 bag or something that, you know, that, that it converts into. So your one hope of, uh, so in terms of my comments, one, if you're driving the high-end user route, then developing those brand champions, uh, you know, whether it's a Deepika Padukone or somebody like that who's going to be your champion of of this particular uh, product and in some way co-branding it with you will be very critical. And therefore tying up with also the largest suppliers of leather uh, products so that, you know, they can offer some of these to their customers because I think as long as they make the money, there's a margin compared to your cost of uh, manufacturing. 
uh, I think they would be happy to cannibalize some of the leather and sell your products to those same customers itself. Whereas also coming through, that's why I asked you about the cost. If your cost is really around you know, $10 or thereabouts, then does it make sense for you to appeal to the mass affluent? You know, I mean, whether it's the baggage or the speeders of the world who have already a business with volumes where what you are producing, because uh, you know, banana is very much available, not just here, but many parts of the world, which are uh, in some sense um, agrarian uh, geographies, right? So, uh, and emerging markets in many ways. So it, it just lends to even the mass affluent, if you will, uh, for those kind of uh, products. Yeah. So there are two things. One, coming to the cost, you are actually right. You know, we are operating at a 65 to 70% gross margin. That's one, making it affordable. And also, as mentioned, we are, you know, we recently signed an NDA with the Caring Group. So that's, again, we are working with uh, like the leading fashion houses to develop a material exclusively for them. Because again, when we are talking high in fashion, it's again about the exclusivity, right? If everyone has that, that's again, like not making sense. Mm -hmm. So we are open to that where we customize materials, even in India, Anita Dongre has uh, requested to, you know, get a material exclusively for her where we sign an India with her to have it exclusively for her. We also do that. So we, you can say we can serve, we are serving both the markets parallel because again, it's a growing market. Like the demand is there. So, yeah. Good. No, so if you, uh, what's your cost of production? The question was, can you then cater even to the mass affluent market also? It could be a different brand of leather or whatever of, of uh, product that you, you provide. Because that gives you volumes as well. Because the first route of going through making it fashionable is a high investment case. Uh, takes time, you know, takes uh, uh, for great to gain acceptance and things like that. Yeah, so right now we are operating at a very pilot scale. So as we scale up, we have a plan to scale up at the end of this year where we increase production, more automation, things like that. The cost will become almost half. So that's there where, you know, like we can save on the uh, cost of production. Uh, that's one. Secondly, we are, you know, more into sustainability. There are plant-based leather out there where they have pretty much material available for everything like say furniture, automobile, everything, but that has lo a lot of plastic content in it. We really don't want to do that. We want to achieve a material that's 100% bio-waste, yet it performs. So that's where we are kind of in. So as we scale up, I think that problem of, you know, like of being available for the masses of material that can be used by everyone that will be there. Sure, I was thinking the false leather market is a, it's a very big market that you could tap in. Yeah. But I mean, I'll stop there. So I've seen your product, Bajoy. I think it's fantastic. I've, I've saw the integration with Beej and I've, I've seen the, uh, the material. I just have one comment and very similar to what uh, Mr. Pauli said. I think the 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 challenge with the high end is always uh, how exclusive you can make it, but you guys seem to be getting there. Um, I think the, the challenge with the low end is it goes beyond leather. The biggest material in most bags now is actually polyester and, and as you rightly said, some were, you know, plastic. I think just more and more work on the design needs to continue happening to make it exclusive and brand building. So, so all the best to you guys. I think you guys are doing a great job already. Thank you so much. So we are not only into, as I mentioned, we are a material science company. Uh, as right now, it's like a material that's out there, like the leather with the banana stems, but we are working with other alternative materials as well, like Typha and everything. And coming to like, you know, as high end fashion is very difficult and not really a dependable market. So we are also into this phase where we are connected with Aditya Villa Group. You know, they have brands like Alan Soli and uh, which are not exact, like not masses, not, you know, like high end, something in between. So we are also tapping into that. That's there. Mm -hmm. We also do a lot of. Uh, you know, college merchandise for Yale, Harvard, and sustainability is a thing in the US, right? So all colleges want to get into something that's sustainable. So we are an official supplier for notebooks uh, and a few planners, things like that for Yale, Harvard, MIT, and there's again another university in Rice. Yeah. Hi, uh, there are two questions from the audience, uh, if I may take them. 
Mr. Rakesh Titar, his he is uh, you know he has a question if the dyes are also made from natural uh, substance. And uh, the second one goes by Mr. Mehala Kumar. He is asking what is the end of life disposal mechanism for the Banofi material. Yeah, so as mentioned about the composition, right now it's 60% banana stems, 20% other natural additives, and other 20% is actually the non bio waste colors right now what we are using. But we are working with nat natural dyes to make it 100% uh, bio waste material. That's one. And secondly, coming to the life. So uh, we really don't want to create a material that lasts forever. So our lifespan is around four to five years of the material. And, but it's 100% circular. Once, like say someone who has bought a bag five years back and returns us, we can actually turn them into another kind of leather. It's 100% circular. Sure, thank you. Any closing uh, questions from Mr. Banerjee? I sensed, uh, you know, if you have any. No, I, I, have covered, I have, I've done a bit of reading on this in the space, so I'm a bit more informed. But uh, I, I can understand where you're coming from and, and a great job. Uh, keep the, the tempo up and I think you are onto something. All the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Bijoy, for a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. Thank for so the much. product, uh, the lovely product that you have. Um, yeah. uh, should I move on to the next uh, presentation if there are no further comments from panel? Yeah, so we move on to the next uh, startup of the day. Uh, I would like to invite Mr. Sheikh Ziaur Rahman and Mr. Ranjan Kumar Gupta from Paving Plus. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. This is Sheikh Ziaur Rahman. I have with me Ranjan Kumar Gupta. So we are the founders of Paving Plus. Please allow us 30 seconds to share the screen, then we can continue with the deck. Just a second. I hope the screen is visible. Yes, it is. And we are starting at 30, uh, at uh, 3.51. So we already know the ground the grind of 10 minutes, uh, followed by 10 minutes back. Sure, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Fiki, for giving opportunity to showcase our product. Uh, we are uh, myself, Ranjan Kumar Gupta. I'm a founder and CEO of the Paving Plus. We'll move to the next one. Yeah, basically problem. Agar, uh, sir, are you comfortable with the Hindi or English language? Sure, sure. Sure. Okay so, with both. Don't know. Yeah, so basically we have started in 2018 as a college project. Yeah, we find that two major problems. One of the plastic waste industry, another is the construction industry. We have these two major problems identify and make a mission to where we recycle it. आपके हमारे अपने घर के निकले हुए वेस्ट प्लास्टिक व्हेन आई एम टॉकिंग ऑफ द वेस्ट प्लास्टिक वो किसी भी टाइप का प्लास्टिक हो चॉकलेट का रैपर हो या शैंपू का बोतल हो या मिक्स प्लास्टिक हो सारे टाइप के वेस्ट प्लास्टिक को हम रिसाइकल करते हैं रीब्यूल्ड करते हैं बेहतर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर को और रीइमेजिंग करते हैं सस्टेनेबल इको फ्रेंडली ग्रीनर वर्ल्ड को अगर आज हम प्रॉब्लम्स की बात करें इंडिया में हर साल 30 मिलियन टन ऑफ वेस्ट प्लास्टिक जनरेट होता है अभी जैसे हमारे पहले जो इन्होंने पिच किया कि जैसे आज हमारे लिए प्लास्टिक इतना बड़ा प्रॉब्लम्स हो गया उन्होंने एक सॉल्यूशन बनाया सेम आज इंडिया में यही प्रॉब्लम्स है प्लास्टिक क्योंकि ये जो प्लास्टिक से ये रिसाइकेबल जो होता है अब तो केवल 30% ही हम रिसाइकल करते हैं और 70% एज यूजुअल लैंडफिल में रह जाता है इसका सबसे बड़ा रीजन ये होता है जो मिक्स प्लास्टिक व्हेन आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट द मिक्स प्लास्टिक मतलब अनसेग्रीगेटेड प्लास्टिक जिसके अंदर एलडी एचएम पीपीए सारे प्लास्टिक जो मिक्स होते हैं अगर कलकत्ता दिल्ली बेंगलोर जैसे शहरों में हर दिन 500 मैट्रिक टन ऑफ द अनसेग्रीगेटेड वेस्ट प्लास्टिक जनरेट हो रहा है वहीं पर अगर हम बात करें कंस्ट्रक्शन इंडस्ट्री के इट्स वन ऑफ द मोस्ट पोल्यूटिंग इंडस्ट्री बोला जाता है 37% ग्लोबल ग्रीन हाउस गैस इमिशन कम फ्रॉम दिस इंडस्ट्री जहां पे हम लोग हर साल 5 बिलियन मैट्रिक टन ऑफ न्यू नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज को कंज्यूम कर जाते हैं जिसके कारण हम हर साल 3 बिलियन मैट्रिक टन ऑफ कंस्ट्रक्शन एंड डिमोलिशन में जिसको सीएनडी वेस्ट बोला जाता है विल बी जनरेटिंग इसी दो मेजर प्रॉब्लम्स को हमने सॉल्यूशन बनाया हुआ है जहां पे हम लोग पेवर ब्लॉक्स बनाते हैं पेवर टाइल्स बनाते हैं 
प्लास्टिक स्लम्बर बनाते एक्सेट्रा जो कि जिसका भी पाथवे में कंस्ट्रक्शन एरिया में लैंडस्केपिंग में ड्राइव में हम करते हैं अगर हम बात करें अपने प्रोडक्ट के कि वेस्ट वाउ ये प्रोडक्ट बनता कैसे है तो बेसिकली वी हैव अ टू प्रोसेस वन ऑफ द पी ट्वेंटी प्रोसेस इन पी ट्वेंटी प्रोसेस विल टेक अ वेस्ट प्लास्टिक एंड री प्रोसेस विथ इंडस्ट्रियल वेस्ट एंड मेकिंग अ प्रीमिक्स उस प्रीमिक्स को हमारे जो तो कॉन्क्रीट मेटेरियल होता है उसके सीमेंटियस पाथ को हम रिप्लेस करते हैं अप टू ट्वेंटी परसेंट फिर इसको मोल्डिंग करते डी मोल्ड एंड अटैक कर लेते हैं दिस इज द प्रोडक्ट विच कम्स फ्रॉम दी पी ट्वेंटी दिस इज द पी ट्वेंटी प्रोडक्ट वहीं पर अगर हम बात करें पी एट्टी प्रोसेस से जो एक ग्रांड पेटेंटेड प्रोसेस से बना हुआ है जहां पे हम लोग अप टू एट्टी परसेंट ऑफ दी अनसेग्रीगेटेड तो वेस्ट प्लास्टिक लेते हैं वहीं पे जो ट्वेंटी परसेंट होता है वो भी एक अदर इंडस्ट्रियल वेस्ट होता है हम इसको होमोजीनियसली मिक्स करते हैं मिक्स करने के बाद स्ट्रोजन के थ्रू पास करते हैं फिर इसको हम मोल्डिंग एंड डिमोल्डिंग में चेक कर लेते हैं सबसे दिस इज आवर पी ट्वेंटी प्रोसेस प्रोडक्ट तब दोनों का सबसे बेस्ट पार्ट ये होता है कि जो मल्टी लेयर प्लास्टिक वेस्ट बोला जाता है जिसको हाथ टू रिसाइकल प्लास्टिक वेस्ट बोला जाता है हम इस प्लास्टिक वेस्ट को 60 टू 70 परसेंट तक हम रिसाइकल करते हैं अगर कंपेटिव एनालिसिस की बात करें हमारा प्रोडक्ट इन टर्म्स ऑफ द कंप्रेसिव स्ट्रेंथ इज टू टाइम्स मोर टू टाइम्स स्ट्रॉगर देन द नॉर्मल ट्रेडिशनल और अदर्स प्रोडक्ट जैसे कि हमारे पास इट्टी मेगा पास का कंप्रेसिव स्ट्रेंथ होता है वहीं पर अगर हम लोड बेरिंग कैपेसिटी की बात करें हमारे प्रोडक्ट के ऊपर 150 फिफ्टी मैट्रिक टन के भी लोड देने बाद किसी भी टाइप का वेयर एंड टीयर नहीं होता है वहीं पर अगर हम वेट कंपेरिजन बात करें हमारा प्रोडक्ट फिफ्टी परसेंट लाइटर होता है और सबसे बड़ी बात जहां पे हम कंस्ट्रक्शन इंडस्ट्री को हमें पंद्रह दिन से लेकर ट्वेंटी वन डेज तक के लिए प्रॉपर क्यूरिंग करना पड़ता है वो भी फ्रेश वाटर के साथ जबकि हमारे प्रोसेस में किसी भी टाइप के वाटर क्यूरिंग की रिक्वायरमेंट नहीं करना पड़ता है और ये जो प्रोडक्ट होता है ये वाटर रेजिस्टेंस प्रोडक्ट होता है जिसकी वाटर रिजन लेस देन वन परसेंट होती है आज कंपेटिव एनालिसिस बात की आज हमारे पास एक ग्रांड पेटेंट है हमने ऑलरेडी दो पब्लिक ऑलरेडी दो पेटेंट और हमने फाइल कर रखा है बारह से ज्यादा हम लोगों ने अलग अलग मटेरियल को रिसाइकल एंड अपसाइकिल करके प्रोडक्ट बनाने का हमने रिसर्च पेपर भी पब्लिश किया हुआ है वी आर द वन ऑफ द कंपनी जहां मल्टी लेयर प्लास्टिक वेस्ट को रिसाइकिल करते हैं वो कोई भी पैरामीटर हो फिजिकल पैरामीटर हो जैसे कंप्रेसिव स्ट्रेंथ टेंसाइल स्ट्रेंथ फ्लेक्सिबल स्ट्रेंथ ये जितने भी पैरामीटर होते हैं फिजिकल और केमिकली हर पैरामीटर में हमारा प्रोडक्ट जो होता है बेहतर परफॉर्म करता है और सबसे बड़ी बात जब हम सस्टेनेबल की बात करते हैं जब हम सस्टेनेबल मटेरियल्स की बात करते हैं तो एक बड़ा सवाल आता है कि कॉस्ट क्या हुआ जबकि हमारा प्रोडक्ट अप टू थर्टी चीपर होता है और हमारा जो प्रोडक्ट है कार्बन निगेटिव प्रोडक्ट है वो ऑलरेडी दूध आवर एल सी ए पार्ट ऑफ दी आवर प्रोडक्ट जहां हमारा जो इम्पैक्ट जो होता है थर्टी परसेंट ये कम होता है बाकी ट्रेडिशनल और बाकी मेटीरियल का अपेक्षा माई सेल्फ रंजन कुमार गुप्ता फाउंडर इन सी ऑफ दिविंग प्लस आई हैव मेटेरियल एक्सपर्ट आई हैव कम्प्लीटेड माई बी इन सिविल डिपार्टमेंट एंड एम टेक इन सिरामिक आई हैव टू ईयर एक्सपीरियंस इन द कंस्ट्रक्शन इंडस्ट्री माई सेल्फ शेख जाउर रहमान आई एम दूफाउंडर एंड सी बी ओ सो एम दिजनेस एक्सपर्ट I have done my management from I am Rachi, and I have I have three years of experience in startups as well as business consulting. So we have different mentors on board. So Dr. Shadan Kumar Ghosh is a waste management expert. Dr. Sami Joshi is a permanent member of United Nations, and Naki Hussain is a venture build expert. So if we take you through the business model, how we operate. So we have direct operation model where we have one model, company on company operated model. We use both the processes in this model. We have two manufacturing units right now. All in West Bengal, and we are we are covering two states in India. So in the revenue model, we sell our sell sell our products to different B two B clients. We also sell plastic credits. We are upcoming with carbon credits. We talk about the market size. So as you know, the construction industry market is a total industrial market is more than two lakh eighty eighty thousand crore of construction materials market. A share a serviceable available market of ninety six thousand crore. and we have a share of, we are targeting a share of market of 500 crore in the next 2 to 3 years this is the current traction so we generated more than 4 cr of revenue till date so as an impact first startup so we created a lot of impact on ground the first one is the environmental impact so we have recycled and upcycled 185 metric tons of waste plastic till date we have paved more than 10 lakh square feet of materials with uh, of space with our materials and we have avoided and reduced more than 136 metric tons of co2 till date in the social impact we have created 40 direct employment and 100 indirect employments also we have been targeting or uh, to impact the rag pickers who are the lowest strata of the waste management cycle but also an important part we have increased the rag pickers uh, about 50 rag picker wages by 30% uh, within the last one year 
these are some of the awareness initiatives which we have already done in sundarbans in sea beaches of bengal with malin group also these are some of our clients so we did we deal with real estate projects industrial park projects different other institutional projects and individual projects so sureka group mp billa group itc are one of the renowned clients which we have these are some of our projects we started doing projects from 5000 square feet right now we are doing more than 10 lakh square feet of projects different projects in different industrial parks and areas in and around bengal also we have done some institutional projects with itc limited where we have made uh, build a school with uh, with our, with our products also uh, with and with round table india also we have done a project in uh, bangalore with world trade center so we are scaling up our operations we are expanding in eastern and southern india we are also trying to get mous done with different municipalities in eastern and southern india we are trying to recycle increase the recycling capacity from 1 metric ton right now to 10 metric tons in the next few months and we are uh, projecting a revenue growth of 3 to 5x every year thereby reduction in carbon of more than 5000 metric tons in uh, because we are avoiding cement and natural resources use also we are utilizing plastic waste we are trying to implement more than 200 direct and 800 indirect employments also uplifting the rag pickers thank you so much please join us on our mission and let's make a difference together would love to answer all your questions thank you mr gupta i would like to now invite the panel to share their observations and questions we i can go first again uh, so good uh, thank you very much i think it's a very uh, interesting space and i suspect that there is a lot of opportunity here two quick uh, one if my understanding is right you mentioned that your product is 30% cheaper than traditional paving blocks is that right 30% lower is that a correct number that i heard yes sir so our, our pat products are 30% lower in cost in terms of traditional traditional methods or traditional concrete blocks Okay, so then that's a clear advantage for anybody to use your product because it is cheaper, it is more environment friendly. So it's kind of a no-brainer why they should use it. So then the question to you is two one one: Are you able to then scale? Can you get the is is supply and therefore manufacturing at scale uh, something that is feasible? Because you're reliant on getting the pellets and things like that from the market uh, because there has to be recycled plastic pellets of so this to be made first. and my anxiety is does it travel well because you know the pellets and the waste might not travel well so have you looked at the supply chain part of it for manufacturing at scale uh, because you need to make that maybe the paver blocks will travel you know you can send it from you know hosur to uh, kanyakumari but the waste doesn't so you will need to have pilot plants almost distributed so from that perspective does the supply chain economics make sense and my related question is why are you only looking through end user a lot of epc companies right i mean they would be working with all kinds of end users whether it could be industrial park could be uh, residential complexes commercial complexes uh, uh, is not partnering with epc companies to put your product into the market and by that same token partnering with some of the new construction b to c brand whether it's a jsw or a um, uh, asian paints who are actually getting into branded products in the space is that not a route that you could also explore because your products per se i think from if i just go by face value except everything that you say then this is this is what i think many paver blocks all residential complexes for their podiums they should be using your product uh, definitely so first of all we are not using any pallets so we recycle our own so we only hmm. get the waste from the municipalities municipality that municipality no, no, i said pellets from... not pallets pellets because you want yeah, the pellets. plastic for your recycling with your raw material for your manufacturing no we don't use pellets sir so because oh, okay. the raw the raw material is only the consumer waste which normally we use yeah, but, the pet bottles yeah. which we have or the plastic pouches then which even less throw. traveling you it, it has to be used yeah. exactly where you source it you can't transport it from you know one place to another yeah so the municipality dumps those pellets we have a factory in the municipality calcutta municipal corporation thapa area there is a landfill here very big landfill one of the biggest landfill in eastern india so we have a factory there and the, all the dump all the uh, sources of waste comes from different wards and it gets dumped in our go down so from there we uh, start the recycling process also the rag pickers brings us some 
some of the waste which we use. This is the first one. The second is yes, sir. We are looking for EPC companies. Uh, we have been tying up with ITC lately because they are headquartered in Calcutta. We have tie ups. Uh, we have been tying up with Polycab. We have uh, been tying up with other municipal other municipal corporations also who have who is having the problem of waste. So we are growing at a scale. We just started our operations in October two thousand and twenty two. And we have scaled quite a lot within within that range, one and a half year. We are trying to generate a revenue of more than ten CR this year. So within that scale, we are also trying to scale up. We we have the technology. We have the uh, we don't have the funding, but we have the technology. We have the machinery. We have the expertise. Uh, we are looking for funds also right now, as of now, to scale this up into a very big business in the near future. Fair enough. Yeah, so my question was because you're now that you said you used waste plastic, which are pickers, and to get that volume consistently supplied at the scale that you need, I'm thinking that might be a challenge because you can't transport place waste. You know, it's, it's what weight to volume ratio is very adverse. So that was my observation. But I'll leave it to other panel members who have made a question. I'm just thinking scaling might be a challenge for you in terms of. So what in terms of that, what we have done is like we directly are talking with municipal corporations. So 500 metric ton is the daily uh, consumer waste which is which being generated in one city in India. So we have six uh, metro cities where we are generating more than 3000 metric ton. With 3,000 metrics done, we need around five years to reach to that capacity. So also, there is a legacy waste which is already there with the municipalities. That is why landfills are full. So uh, so that those wastes are also given to us. So we are utilizing those wastes. So it will take more than 50 years to actually recycle those wastes. If at all, we go at a very high capacity. So waste is not a problem per se as of today uh, because we are getting the waste from the wards, that is the uh, governments and the municipalities' job to take waste from the environment and bring it to the landfills. But they don't know how to recycle. So we're giving them a solution to recycle those waste. So we are a solution provider to all those unrecyclable waste there and there itself. So the transportation is bad by the government itself. That is not on us. We take the waste either for free or better at a very minimal charge. So, so great to see uh, uh, the progress you guys have made in just a year and a half. In fact, uh, I have I you mentioned a lot of people who are already doing it in your presentation, and I've seen their work. I think the one suggestion for you guys is the challenge on supply chain is also on the other side. It's not just on the uh, sourcing of plastic. It's also that the transportation cost. For some of these materials in construction, they are very, very localized, right? So, you know, we have seen many startups who reach a certain scale and then they really struggle because they are not able to, uh, once you factor in the cost of transportation to another location, it becomes uncompetitive versus, you know, what is being used traditionally. So my only suggestion for you would be to just go deeper and deeper in Bengal, in the East, and almost have that radius where your supply chain cost can actually bear out and beat what is existing ways of using it. Uh, because multi three or four companies have seen they hit that uh, ceiling because of the transportation costs. And obviously to keep costs low as much as possible. But otherwise, great work and was very surprised that you have just been incorporated two years back. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. So in the in the in the industry that you are in, uh, Jindal Mekno may be the leader, right? In the in this in this industry, right? No, Ultratech so, is the leader in the cement industry. Ultratech uh, is the leader. Okay, but my understanding, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, right? The the, the input material for them is predominantly soil, right? Uh, and that is itself becoming a scarcity. So the the, the obviously the the tailwinds for you is even more in that sense. Uh, the I, the question which I have for you is that if this is is this a if this is a mass market uh, material or uh, or a product, why is the adoption not been so strong? Traction has not been that great because even you are pricing it at thirty percent cheaper. Uh, the input cost going higher for these leaders such as Ultratech you mentioned, Jindal Vectors and all. So this should have really caught on fire, right? So what's what's the distortion that I'm unable to understand. So uh, the distortion, is, it's it's not a distortion actually, it's the uh, way to go actually. Our, our strategy was to first test the materials 
uh, in the physical appearance as it is and in a physical parameters. So we were doing the R&D since 2018. R&D are already completed during in 2022. Then we started operations, but the R&D did not stop there because we need to understand customer needs. So it took us one one and a half year to understand what the market is, what the market needs, how the market reacts to such a material, and then right now we are in the verge of scaling this up to a very high level. That is why we are uh, sourcing funds for making a great cap good capacity, a better capacity. We have a we have a small machine as of today. Uh, we are get good getting uh, good profits out of it. So we we increase the capacity, but we don't have so much of money because it will require a lot on the efficiency and the costing part uh, in terms of funds to increase it more and more and to get through the barrier. So and real estate, you, you know, real estate industry is one of the reluctant industry where they don't want to change. So we are struggling. We have been struggling since last one year to make it through the roof in the real estate industry. Now we have the market. We have more than 25 clients right now. People understood the product. People are gaining trust in the product. Now we can scale this up. So it is the right now the opportunity for us in this fiscal year because we have done uh, 3 CR last year. We are targeting 12, 10 to 12 CR this year. So it's 4x growth. Uh, I think very less industry would do that 4x growth in so such a less time. So we know uh, what, what we are venturing out for. We just have to uh, you know, fi fi we already found out where we are heading to, and right now we are trying to scale up, scale this up. Is this uh, very the processes that you have uh, structured or designed? These are very labor intensive. No, we have done yeah. a totally automatic process. Yeah. Okay. okay. We have reduced. We there is obviously labor, but we have reduced the intensity of the labor in the whole process. Right now, what we are doing is a little labor intensive because we don't have automation as of now. But in the in the near next to two to three months, we will have a lot of automation coming in because we have designed the machines in that way so that it could give us more and more efficiency out of the whole process. And the plastic that you are receiving as an input is not seg not to be segregated, right? It is as it as is basis, and you can process it accordingly. Is that the mm -hmm. understanding? Yes. Okay. yes. The first part of the segregation has to happen because the, the there is no segregation at source in Calcutta. So what happens is like you get cloth, you get wood, you get metal in with in the consumer waste. So first set of segregation is needed. The second set of segregation is you don't have to segregate different plastic materials. All the one to seven uh, plastic you don't have to segregate. You give us all, okay. so we can we can uh, we can consume all of those and we say we can recycle those. And in this, there is a processing plant. In this, there is a combustion chamber. Yeah, Ranjan, uh, technical part. Yeah, no yeah no, a... sir. Basically, no, sir. You have no combustion because you are not uh, burning the plastic. Basically, you are melting the plastic. Uh, so, what? How do you process it? Do you do you have to process it, right? You have to get it into some form of pellets or some form of. Uh, so normally, sir, we'll, or... yeah. So normally, sir, we'll take a plastic, spray it. The desired size which you require, then mix the other material proportionally which you require the strength and all the things. Then this material go to hopper and hopper to extruder machine. And that then that time the lumps will become and that lumps go up to pressing, cooling and all the things. In the whole the process, there are no need of the any uh, burning of the plastic or anything. Secondary जो ये plastic जब हमारा जाता है extrusion technology extrusion से जब pass होता है और जो इसके heat होते हैं ना तो जो हमारी heat के अंदर जो heat निकल पर heat बोलो जो इसमें जो smoke निकलता है इस already catalytic chamber जो इसको absorb करता है तो उसमें किसी भी time का harmful gases या heavy metals वो बाहर नहीं निकलता है तो combustion को किस कहीं पे भी involved नहीं है आपके process में नहीं no 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 नहीं तो combustion ठीक thank you Um, that's the closing question, I guess. Uh, so we'll, in the interest of time, we'll move forward with the last and the fourth presentation of the day. Uh, there are two questions in the sorry, really uh, box. Nidhi, uh, Nidhi, sorry, if I can come in, there are two questions on the chat box. Uh. Yes, one is a concern and one is a question. Uh, that uh, Mr. Akshay Chauhan asks if you are able to recycle um, as informed during the presentation for MLP, you are able to recycle 60 to 65 percent. So, how are you disposing remaining residue waste? 
And uh, the second one is a concern which I think Mr. Banerjee also had uh, kind of wanted to uh, point out that not very happy about plastic going as styles as the constant use wear, wear and tear. It will generate microplastic particles, which is terrible for health, uh, he says. This so I will go for the second question. कंसंट्रेशन ऑफ देंसर तो नॉर्मली जब हमने अपने प्रोडक्ट का पूरा टेस्ट चेक कराया फ्रॉम सेपेट भुवनेश्वर टू सेपेट हल्लिया एंड अदर प्लेसेस तो हम जब एक केजी वेस्ट प्लास्टिक को नॉर्मली हम एनवायरमेंट में छोड़ते हैं तो जितना नंबर ऑफ दी माइक्रो प्लास्टिक दे आर जनरेटिंग जब हम उसको प्रोडक्ट फॉर्म में जब इस टाइप के जो प्रोडक्ट बना देते हैं उसमें जो होता है 1/10000 लेसर हो जाता है माइक्रो प्लास्टिक लीचिंग का ये कहना और गलत होगा कि हमारा प्रोडक्ट माइक्रोप्लास्टिक लीचिंग नहीं करता है ये गलत होगा बट जब हमने टेस्ट कराया तो वन बाई टेन थाउजेंड टाइम्स कम हो जाता है तो ये बहुत बड़ा नंबर होता है जब हम इसको एज इज ड्रेन से एज इज इज हम उसको लैंडफिल में या एनी एयर एंड टेयर भेज देते हैं और उस प्लास्टिक के साथ माइक्रो के तो के साथ साथ सबसे बड़ा जो प्रॉब्लम ये होता है वो कहीं भी ड्रेनेज में या वहां पे जाकर फंस जाता है तो एक क्या बोला होता हूँ बारिश के सीओ में बहुत बड़ा मतलब प्रॉब्लम क्रिएट करता है जबकि हमारा प्रोडक्ट इस तरीके से नहीं करता और सेकेंडरी जहां तक आपने टाइल्स वगैरह या कोई भी कंस्ट्रक्शन इंडस्ट्री की बात करते उसमें ब्रिथिलनेस होता है अगर हम उस कंस्ट्रक्शन इंडस्ट्री के मेटेरियल्स को लगाते हैं तो अगर आपने देखा हो एक टाइम के बाद वो भी एक मेटेरियल्स को रिलीज करता है जो हमारे हेल्थ के लिए भी एक हार्जार्टिय बात होता है सेकेंडरी जहां हम टाइल्स वगैरह नॉर्मल कंक्रीट का लगाता है उसका जो लाइफ साइकिल होता है थ्री टू फोर इयर्स का होता है जबकि हमारे प्रोडक्ट का लाइफ साइकिल टेन टू फिफ्टीन इयर्स होता है जबकि वो जो नॉर्मल जो कंक्रीट के जो मेटेरियल्स होते हैं उसकी एंड ऑफ द लाइफ वो लैंडफिल में जाता है जबकि हमारे प्रोडक्ट जो होता है हम इसको रिसाइकिल कर लेते हैं तो ये चार पांच पॉइंट थे राकेश जी जो कि हमारा प्रोडक्ट बेहतर परफॉर्म करता है ये सारे पैरामीटर्स में हाँ जहां तक वियर एंड टीयर का है तो वो भी सर हमारा वन वाई टेन टेन थाउजेंड टाइम कम होता है for the quite first question uh, to aksha uh, i'll i'll say that uh, the mlp we are using is the total process we are using 100 around 80% waste plastic 60 to 80% waste plastic on that 60 to 80% waste plastic we are using more than 60 plastic mlps the rest 30 40% is the other other type of plastic that is hdp ldp so we are not uh, disposing any of the plastic we are utilizing every every bit of the plastic waste which we are Uh, which we have or uh, which we are getting thank you uh, thank you mr riman uh, uh, so we've already uh, reached 4:15 i would now uh, like to go to the next presentation of uh, royal bengal green tech i would like to invite pallavi luharka pallavi welcome to the session uh, over thank you, you so much Thank you so much, everyone, for your time. I am just sharing my screen. Please let me know when it is visible. Yes, uh, yes. Pallavi, screen is on. Okay. So, welcome to Royal Bengal Green Tech, where sustainability is made affordable. I am the founder and CEO, a gold medalist in chemical engineering, a cost accountant, and MBA. Worked ten plus years with leading multinationals like Honeywell and Grace. before founding rbg 2 years back i have worked across domains starting from research and development to techno commercial sales across various geographies five patents to my credit our team comprises of 100 plus years across domains starting from research and development techno commercial sales serial entrepreneurship to business development and we have a lot of advisors uh, to support us we won several recognitions uh, through the ecosystem uh, we were announced as the sustainable startup of the year by hdfc uh, we were the global winner uh, we won the tai 50 award at the silicon valley just last month uh, we were also amongst top 10 change makers declared by zomato as a part of their packathon for plastic free orders uh, we were also maruti suzuki innovation winners for the uh, east uh, idea hunt uh, and the list goes on uh we have one granted patent one applied another one in progress and three trademarks now did you know petroleum based plastic takes hundreds of years to degrade but would you pay three times for a biodegradable alternative and what about the electrical electronic and automotive waste that is neither recyclable nor biodegradable and constitutes more than 100 billion us dollar worth of waste contributing to 17% global carbon footprint by 
presenting Bhavishyaplast, bioplastic of the future. This is our patented, award-winning, agri-waste derived, 100% biodegradable plastic, which is priced same as normal plastic, relative to three times costlier alternatives. Our initial target would be secondary and tertiary packaging, including industrial packaging, and future would be electrical, electronic, automotive, coatings, furniture, and all those applications which today do not have a biodegradable alternative. And we have a patent granted in India. Most importantly, we are converting waste to wealth. Unlike highly unsustainable feedstocks like corn, which is a direct conflict with food, or mushroom stems and seaweeds, which are extremely difficult to source. Ours is the only known heat and water resistant bioplastic compared to others which dissolve in water. And we have been able to reduce the price drastically by virtue of using waste as our primary feedstock. We are talking same price as normal plastic relative to three times costlier alternatives. Because we are patented, we have a first mover advantage and all the mechanical properties of our bioplastic is same if you compare it with a petroleum-based plastic for the same application. We recently completed our pilot and now we are all set to commercialize our innovation by Q3 2024. It degrades in soil as well as water in less than 90 days. Its durability is much superior compared to any other bioplastic that you see in the market. We have our uh, testing partner is uh, Indian Institute of Packaging. And it does not melt and it has very high heat resistance. So that is the reason why it can be used for very, uh, you know, a variety of engineered plastic applications, which currently it was not possible. Now, the raw material that we are using, it is waste broken rice. If we talk about India, we are a net exporter of rice and India alone produced 60 lakh metric tons of broken rice in 2022 alone which means we have greatly abundance of this raw material. Probably one of the most sustainable supply chain logistics possible because it is easily available in the rice mills. Most importantly, in these rice mills, 30 to 35 percent astonishing number is the rice that is not fit for human consumption. And that is the rice which we intend to take. There's a lot of rice that gets degraded due to weather. It is attacked by rodents and also available from food corporations. And there's a lot of scope across the globe because we are talking 240 lakh tons of broken rice available globally. Now, how it works is, let's say we have a shopper stop carry bag, right? As we know, you and me as the consumer has to pay for the uh, shopping bag every time we visit a shopping bag. So that if per bag, it costs about 15 to 20 rupees per bag, which is made of paper. Paper, as we know, is not sustainable, not durable, and also not water resistant. Whereas if you take Bhavishya Plast, you will get it at much lower price, about 10 to 15 rupees per bag, much more durable. Hence, the brand recall is very high, which all of us are looking for, and truly eco-friendly and sustainable. So right now, we are leveraging off-take partnerships with hospitals, shopping malls, delivery partners for these shopping bags that we will be producing, and also raw material sourcing from various rice mills across uh, Bengal to start with. Initially, we are targeting B2B sales of the bioplastic films and shopping bags that we will be manufacturing. But in the long run, our primary goal is to be a licensing and technology-based company because we have a patent applied for it and the vast number of applications that we see this product has. We are talking 600 billion US dollar plus market, out of which 60% is packaging alone. India alone is 20% of that market and we can easily capture 5% of that in the next 10 years. Here is a technology made in India for the world. As we speak, we've already raised 53 lakhs from various sources like IIT Kanpur, IIM Kolkata and Sharda Federation Launchpad. And we've used that to customize the machine that will be required for continuous production and commercialization of this product, which will happen in Q3. Now we are raising another 2 crore rupees for, uh, to be used as working capital. This is a brief of the uh, projections that we have for the next five years, including when we intend to raise capital, how we intend to uh, scale. 
and we are talking about 40 to 50 percent of EBITDA as we grow. And uh, the initial target that we have is 640 metric tons per annum. Our average sale value will be same at par with the petroleum-based plastic, which is about 150 rupees a kg, and uh, a glimpse of how we intend to use the uh, money that we raise. So let us please come together and save 7 trillion US dollar worth of plastic pollution, contributing to 17% global carbon footprint by 2050. Let's incentivize farmer and promote agriculture, help save and enable nine SDGs laid by the UN. Let's save Mother Earth, save lives. As we speak, we also manufacture 100% eco-friendly lubricants, which are zero petroleum, zero animal fat, purely made from vegetable oil. This we are enabling to achieve 360 degree sustainability across organizations. And we've received a testimonial from the railways that it performs much better compared to any other petroleum based products. These are some of our happy clients. And we have a dedicated solution for ed every need that you have, whether you are an automobile industry, whether you are an FMCG industry, whether you are any. So we have a customized solution for you, which is 100% sustainable, aligned with RBG's mission to make sustainability affordable. Let's create history together. Thank you. Opening the floor to questions, please. I can go first. I think uh, uh, terrific to see what you're doing, Pandavi. And I've seen, uh, uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, sort of uh, products which are being made from uh, uh, raw material, which is the waste byproduct of other processes. But I doing this uh, from rice is uh, I learned a lot. I just have uh, uh, you know one suggestion for you more than anything else. I think this. The only challenge which I see for you is the fact that you are going to be supplying to a very, very, um, you know, cost, highly uh, commoditized and cost intensive spaces. That's my view. I think, therefore, uh, you know, how do you differentiate yourself more and more, uh, number one, and build a strong brand, which I think uh, would be then uh, a very, very important to be cost competitive in the future. Uh, but otherwise, a uh, great piece of work. And, and the second suggestion I have for you is, are there any other alternate applications beyond uh, what you're doing today? But I think the raw material is is available. I think your your background of being a chemical engineer and then a cost accountant, I'm sure is coming in help. Uh, great work and, and all the best to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Prashant. So to answer your question, uh, so definitely we are looking at building a brand and yes, it is a commoditized market. But what differentiates us is, you know, pleasantly surprising what I found is coming from the uh, heavily petrol, uh, you know, polluting petroleum based industry like Honeywell and Grace. I realized that people today are aware more than ever. They are uh, environmentally conscious. So they want to switch to an eco friendly substitute. But price continues to be the number one driver and decision making factor. So that is where we come in. We have always tried to achieve that affordability aspect of our, uh, uh, you know, products. And that is why our mission is to make sustainability affordable, in fact. So whichever product I spoke about, we want to actually give them something which is, of course, superior in performance, but also comes at a very comparable price. Although that's not where we want to compete. We are not competing on price. But what we are saying is that we are giving you at a price so that your cost of replacement is minimal or zero. So you adopt it in your day-to-day -day lives, which you have not been able to do it earlier because the alternatives were three times costly. This is one aspect. The second aspect is we are looking at engineered plastics, which are primarily those uh, you know high-end premium markets. For example, pharma, uh, you know where price is actually not a consideration. Food where people are still struggling. So we will be entering those markets. Electrical, electronics. I did hear Paving Plus and I'm friends with uh, them too. So we talk uh, quite a lot. So we need all kinds of solutions today to you know help save this 7 trillion worth of plastic pol uh, pollution problem. So I am very conscious that you know I alone cannot do that. I will have limitations with respect to you know scale tomorrow or you know there will be other products which are needed to eliminate all kinds of plastics. So, yes, so understanding all these aspects, we are continuously trying to improve the product, bring down the costs and help everyone, uh, you know, adopt and switch.
can you just uh, elaborate on the grease uh, uh, product that you mentioned your and and kind of <clears throat> you know comparables to it and of course price might be an advantage or not i don't know but maybe uh, the you just mentioned that uh, indian railways has kind of given you a thumbs up on that etc so could you kindly elaborate on that part sure so these lubricants so we do greases as well as uh, oils industrial oils and which is applicable for any and every industry because any and every industry needs both these products in fact so uh, what we are doing is we are eliminating the need of petroleum completely we are using vegetable oil so if you remember and recall uh, historically uh, vegetable oils have been used for lubricant okay but when this petroleum revolution happened there is a natural product stream that comes out from the uh, you know the distillation column and i have been instrumental in designing some of it which is available in india today so i was in the petroleum industry so when we do that because the petroleum refinery by default has a stream they don't have a better alternative for it they do have alternatives but the best alternative for them is to create uh, lubricants so you know even if they want they cannot switch to a natural ve vegetable oil based lubricant system because why will i buy raw material from outside when i have something at my home so that is the reason why you will not hear a lot of vegetable oil based uh, lubricants but that's where we come in so we are reinventing the wheel going back to history taking that as a benchmark and improvising it using our technology innovation so we are doing that and what we have observed is when consumers use it they get much superior performance and you will be able to relate to it every time we use cooking oil at home we tend to reuse it multiple times it is not good for health but very good for lubrication and that is a simple philosophy we are using so it is very very obvious i mean it's it's there it's not something that uh, you know we have uh, uh, we've just reinvented the wheel we have not made a discovery per se to be honest what's your uh, revenue now uh, so we are uh, get to establish pmf we did about 50 lakhs last year but this year we are expecting uh, at least uh, 2xing that Palavi, I think uh, as uh, the others mentioned, it's a very interesting space that you are working on. Um, I just have a fundamental question, and I know I'm going into first principles, but if one were to take the overall system-wide cost of carbon into this, right, whether it's from terms of production of rice, the water that goes into the husk that it creates, the burning of it, if I were to take a systemic approach. right i think it may be useful like if you've already done the analysis it be useful to just think about you know are we serving a greater good maybe we are reducing plastic but we're reducing increasing carbon elsewhere right i mean uh, uh, so there could be things that are happening which is uh, uh, you know working at cross purposes with each other secondly so that's for that's one second i'm thinking that while your product is very uh, uh, you know compared to Uh, uh, bio, what's it called? Let's say biodegradable products. Your product is one third the cost. I'm also thinking about some of these bags and things like that have an aesthetic element to it, right? I mean, because you want to have a certain degree of print and all of that. So, does that also in your product meet that criteria? Because you want a product, a shopping bag, to actually look good, keep out the brand and things like that. and the third point i would say is you you're in some ways competing with very big giants out there i saw mitsubishi i saw a bunch of these large players uh, at, at some point you know I, I, all of them are talking the language of going the green way uh, you know and investing behind so maybe one of your as you scale up your your avenues to raise capital and therefore be in the consideration set of these large companies because i think if they were to adopt some of your products then even the amount of dollar they'd have for research into aesthetic product quality uh, reach into customers like unilever i think that, that is probably quite comparable so your ability to scale those up could also be quite uh, substantive but very interesting product case um, um, i mean it it, uh, it 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 it's still i would think at the nascent stage but all, all the best to you 
Thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, if I may answer your question. So uh, the first part of your question was, uh, you know, about the overall sustainability aspect of producing the sustainable product that I'm claiming. So definitely, uh, you know, the beauty of this product is and the process, in fact, which is our patented processes, we've tried to make it very simple to replicate uh, so that, you know, it can be adopted at scale because I'm looking at licensing. Right. So uh, whatever elements we've chosen is carefully chosen so that there is zero discharge. Yes, you heard that correct. Zero discharge. So our raw material is used as is. We don't have to filter it out. We don't have to screen it out. We don't have to eliminate any part of it. No husk, nothing. Whole as it is, uh, you know, as we receive it, we can convert it completely. Water, whatever water is used in the process is totally evaporated. So it goes back to the environment. So no water discharge, zero. The only thing that we are using right now, in, because we are in a relatively smaller scale, is electricity. So the only carbon footprint that comes throughout the process is electricity, nothing else. And that also eventually, because uh, you know I had this uh, experience of working for licensing companies, especially that has been my expertise. So as we scale, that is also another parameter which can be completely integrated internally. There are so many ways to do that. So that will also be eliminated or at least drastically reduced as we progress. So that's there in the plan. Now, coming to the second part, uh, I think definitely, uh, uh, you know, we are looking at uh, uh, even uh, who knows acquisition from these uh, giants and definitely licensing, because that is something which we want to uh, use uh, as a scaling tool, uh, as a market strategy. So, uh, you know, uh, my vision was uh, setting up this first commercial reference, which I'm doing right now, so that the world knows that this process technology works. The product that I'm producing is actually something that has a great potential to scale. And once anyone, uh, you know, looks at it and is uh, willing to have a license, we will be ready to offer that as a whole package. In fact, that Sorry, is that where... The whole this... aesthetics works? As in, as in, can it oh, yes. it? I miss that. Yes, definitely. Exactly aesthetics the way is... other paper and other could do. Definitely. So aesthetics is taken care of. You can do whatever you want. It is printable. You can use eco-friendly colors if you want. And, uh, you know, whatever branding you need, everything is customizable. That's not a challenge at all. In fact, just to give you another use case, we are working with one of the jute mills here in uh, Bengal uh, who are very excited to use this uh, because currently the shopping bags that are made out of jute a, very costly. So in India, the market is not as huge as uh, the export market. But they see a huge potential. I did not know that earlier. That, you know, in saplings in the Western countries, they use these jute bags. And then they need some lining inside to retain the water. But that has to be biodegradable because it will go inside the soil. So they see a huge potential there. where our, We can do the coating using our bioplastic. Plus, even the normal shopping bags, the export market is really conscious. They, in fact, did not know how to dispose these jute bags because they have not seen them before. So once they use that, they want a truly 100% sustainable bag because they don't know where to dispose it of, whether it's a compostable waste, whether it's a recyclable waste or not. So then if you offer them a complete package, which has a biodegradable lining inside also, so that, you know, if there is spillage of oil or water or anything, that can also be sustainable, truly sustainable. So we are, uh, you know, in high level talks with them and there's a possibility that we might partner with them for jute exclusively also. So there are so many applications that this plastic has in the form of, you know, even a paper coating for the paper cups, uh, the paints that you use internally. I mean, just the sky is the limit. We just want to establish a first, first working reference. That's all. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any, any further comments and questions uh, uh, by the panel? There are two uh, in the Q&A box, if I may just read out. Uh, uh, so one of the questions is uh, in relation to seeking approval from CPCB, which needs to be available as part of uh, as part for EPR guidelines. Many corporates cannot go forward with these products without these environmental approvals. And uh, this, if, uh, the same person is asking uh, in, in continuation of what uh, you know has been asked already, uh, what about the toxins involved while processing the manufacturing of these bioplastics, say while bringing strength, color, etc. How does RBG is how RBG is planning to tackle this issue? 
Sure. So the first question first. Yes, we need CPCV, uh, uh, you know, uh, certification uh, before we launch it in the market as a product. For that, the process is you need to first have a factory location. Once you have that, you have to apply for a uh, license to establish, followed by a license to operate. Then you are eligible to apply for the ISO certification, ISO 17088 whose certifying authority is CPCB, testing authority is CIPET, the closest one to us who does it is Bhubaneswar. So we have everything, we know the protocol, but now that we have a factory location, we are doing all that, uh, which I mentioned. So yes, we will be complying to all the mandates for sure. Uh, second is, uh, you know, how are we intending to tackle the problem of, uh, you know, toxins? So we are using zero external polymers or, uh, you know, harmful chemicals. In fact, whatever we are using is totally organic. And because I am also one of the inventors, so I have full confidence when I say that. And because we are doing that, there are no toxins involved. For color, as I mentioned, we will be, uh, uh, you know, exploring all the eco-friendly colors when we do that. Uh, maybe to start with, we can uh, explore other color options as well. But the plan is to have a completely eco-friendly solution, including the colors. Thank you. Thank you, Pallavi, for the presentation. Any closing remarks from the experts? Uh, we've already crossed 10 minutes of the uh, scheduled plan. So... I think we will bring this session to a close. Prashant, uh, anything further to add? Overall, if there are any comments on the uh, presentations or anything that was left out. Just one quick comment. I just I think we just need more of these. So and, and thank you so much to Mr. Pauli and Mr. Banerjee for joining us today and spending their time and, and giving us their insights as well. I have learned a lot today, but would love to hear from you, Mr. Pauli and, and Mr. Banerjee. I think, uh, as you said, each of these sessions is very enlightening because you get to see, and I think today I was very thrilled to see uh, at least two of the businesses with uh, ladies uh, leading the charge in terms of invention and things like that. So compliments on that. Uh, I think the next time we need our side to have a few more women. Uh, <laughs> I think there's been three sessions and I've got to both Fiki and Niki. Uh, you know, we, we are probably uh, among our group, but uh, as uh, uh, Prashant said, uh, please call me Bobby. Um, it's been a very enlightening, and uh, you know, in, in terms of looking at the whole waste recovery space, in fact, we on our fund itself is looking at that space and trying to see what comes to see that these kind of products can be plugged into a supply chain ecosystem itself is so enriching, right? I mean, so the point is that you could have scale around multiple of these products onto a platform. Uh, I think the country and the world needs these products. So good, good job on bringing these companies. And I'm hoping that, um, you know, the publicity and the information that the markets get about these companies will lead to more adoption uh, and more partnership, because I think that's that's critical. Each of them need partnerships with uh, larger companies, which is the basis of this uh, sustainability center. Right? I mean, I mean, uh, center for excellence, sustainability excellence, so connecting them with corporate partners, which can help them scale customers and the like yeah yeah the only thing which i can add is uh, I, i'm kind of seeing a very drastic shift from a me to approach wherein there were companies which were coming up just copying something which was happening somewhere else to now actually coming into a problem solving approach to really find a use case where it's very clearly and having a pmf in their minds uh, and i believe that this is a very very a tectonic shift in a sense, the way we are looking at, really looking at the quality of the entrepreneurs who are coming through, uh, using their core innate travel knowledge to solve uh, critical problems. And at least in this showcase, I can clearly see that at least two of the companies have a PMF to actually go to the market already. So that that is something which which was not heard of in you know a lot in recent times, but I can see the confidence coming through. And I think this, these kind of platforms will all be, always provide that encouragement which is needed. So, yeah, a job very well done, actually. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, I would like to, uh, you know, again, uh, thank our panel for taking time out to join us uh, and uh, for the wonderful to each of these startups to, for joining us today. And we at the center would definitely like to uh, continue with this effort and even do. 
other uh, you know uh, um, uh, you know kind of give uh, opportunities for showcasing at various other platforms where we center uh, will definitely work towards and uh, thank you to the audience uh, uh, for for you know their participation and very pointed and uh, you know apt questions uh, if you know this is an ongoing process we would like to stay connected with uh, everyone and if there are any follow up questions to the panelists, uh, to the experts, or to the staffers, please do write to us at sustainability at wiki.com. And we would love to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.